Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Knowledge Show powered by Knowledgescape. My name is Ahmar Zaman and I will be your host for today's session. For the unversed, uh, the Knowledge Show is a unique initiative by Knowledgescape to get global leaders together to discuss matters on talent, business, technology, learning and, and life in general. So without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you our very esteemed guest. Our special guest for today's show is Ms. Ruchira Bhardwaj, who's the Chief Human Resources Officer at Kotak Life Insurance Company. Ruchira brings an interesting combination of strategic HR and cross-functional expertise with over 25 years of experience spanning across diverse industries and multiple functions. Apart from human resources, Ruchira has had the opportunity to contribute towards new product development, business excellence, knowledge management, and business ethics initiatives as well. She's worked with the Tatas for 14 years, where she had the privilege of having a multi-company stint which spanned between iconic organizations such as Taj, Rallis, to startups such as Chroma. Ruchira lives in Mumbai, and she is also zealous about mentoring working women professionals in her personal capacity. She creates time to learn and hone new skills outside of the workplace. She is an avid photographer and considers herself a decent storyteller. Thank you so much, Ruchira. We'll have a lot of stories to hear from you today. Welcome to the Knowledge Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, MR, and thank you, Manu, for the opportunity. Very happy to be here. Along with Ruchira, we have with us our seasoned campaigner, Manu Nanda. At the helm of Nolscapes India and APAC Business is Manu Nanda, Senior Vice President and Chief Business Officer. He's a self-initiator and he thrives on chasing audacious business goals. His expertise lies in creating value for customers, helping organizations with their talent transformation efforts across levels, and delivering high business results. A seasoned enterprise leader with 25 plus years of diverse corporate experience across FMCG, petroleum, retail, automotives, oil and gas, and training and coaching, Manu has held leadership roles across channel management, key accounts, franchisee operations, and consulting. Outside of work, Manu is a movie buff, an avid reader, and a compulsive swimmer, as he calls himself. Thank you, Manu, for joining us once again for this show. Always a pleasure, Emma. Good to be here again. Perfect. So, uh, Ruchira, before we go to the more uh, serious discussion, and by the way, for our audience, the topic for today's uh, discussion is culture of growth mindset. Uh, but we, before we move to that discussion, we have a small uh, rapid fire round for the ice breaking between uh, yourself and Manu, right? So it, it's a fun uh, element to the entire show. And, and we'll start with you, Ruchira. I have a few rapid fire questions for you. Uh, the first one is, uh, would you rather always know the answer to any question or have the power to change the past? Uh, none. Can I say none? Then you'll have to give me some other alternative. Uh, okay, rather what have power, answered all questions. Power, rather have answers to all the questions. Yeah, but you've chosen the right one. If if you you get blessed with that, maybe the session will go perfect, which I'm sure it'll in, in any case, right? But good choice. <laughs> uh, the next question for you, Ruchira, is what is the most unusual skill or hobby that you have learned in your life? I think learning French uh, baking. I never thought I will do baking and that to French baking. So yes, that one. Oh, that's very interesting. Nice. Your next question is, if you could invite any historical figure to be your mentor, who would it be and why? Indira Gandhi, because of the power woman that she was, uh, I'm sure whatever was going on in her mind, would be quite wise, so would want to know that. 
one of my favorites to rochera absolutely all right very interesting uh so uh we will now move to the second last question for you rochera would you rather be a social media influencer or a politician you have already mentioned indira gandhi here but still <laughs> in this day social media age. social media influencer and and why would that be politics has become not a good word that one wants to be associated with mm -hmm. uh, so i'd rather that's why it's, it's like between the deep sea and the devil i'm choosing one of them <laughs> <laughs> cool did that we come to the last question and you did mention french baking but this question is purely about language so if you could learn any language in this instant which one you choose and why chinese okay and then why would that be next super power in the world so rather get to you know understand them better right and they have a closed world anyway right so maybe yes. learning their language might give you an insight into uh, them as well right yes of fact yes. i think i think those were really interesting and great responses manu i think uh, tough tough challenge for you uh, this time yeah great absolutely so manu the first question for you and also to help ruchira understand you better right um if you could invent a quirky job title for yourself what would that be Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, maybe uh, chief, give me the money, officer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Very, very interesting. Um, the next question for you, Manu, is uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, more patience, I would say. So somewhere when uh, you realize now i think over a period of years you realize that you know patience is a key quality that you need to have uh, i think that would be one interesting the next question for you is uh, in the middle of an apocalypse which three skills would you find most valuable for survival mm yeah uh i think faith because when you are in a situation where you're totally helpless i think faith comes first mm -hmm. second would be patience to some extent what i mentioned third would be i think finding some way to you know keep the people around you whether it's your family or friends or relatives in a situation where they try and stay calm which is the toughest thing but yes that's what i could think of right now great response manu uh with that we come to the second last question for you and that is if you weren't in the corporate world what profession would you pursue something that i i think dreamt of always wanted to be was being a pilot reached there to some extent but then a lot of circumstances where i could not pursue so that is something i would love to be i mean if ever you know got an opportunity yes very interesting and and with that we come to the last question in this fun segment manu uh, if you could have dinner with any business icon alive or from history who would that be uh, goes without saying it would be ratan tata i think uh, he's an iconic figure in the business world the values that the tata group brings across its to that and the legacy that he has created i think uh, would be one opportunity i would always seek I think we have the perfect guest with us tonight for that. She has worked with the Tatas of fourteen long years, and maybe uh, she can help you with uh, getting connected to him. Who knows? And that was a very interesting, interesting, uh, uh, fun segment, uh, Ruchira and Manu. And with that, we move on to the topical discussion for today. And and to start off, Ruchira, I'll pose the first question with you, and I'll start with a very basic one, right? Because growth means. very different things for different people right in that context what does growth mean to you and and how would you describe the culture across organizations that you have been part of that has helped you take this transformation journey 
I have a wonderful question to start with. You know, growth has been to me since my very early working days about three things. Opportunity to undertake challenging assignments has been my go-to um, growth parameter. Uh, so whether it's assignments, whether it's work, whether it's initiatives, it has to be challenging. Secondly, about uh, it has been about continuous improvement uh, and learning. So once you take uh, challenging assignments, it automatically gives you the opportunity to learn and also improve the things that have been happening and uh, not maintain the status quo. And thirdly, I think it's also about striving to elevate the depth of the work that my teams have been doing. Uh, that itself is growth to me. So, and throughout my professional journey, I've been really fortunate to be part of organizations which have fostered a culture of growth, whether it was Taj, whether it was Chroma, uh, now Kotak, uh, it has been an amazing journey. Uh, and the kind of people that I've worked with have manifested that growth mindset. And these organizations also value innovation. So if you see Kotak uh, group itself, it has entrepreneurship in its heart. And it has been growing through the years in a very... Um, I, I would say very ethical way of working and it has encouraged people to take ownership of their own development. Uh, it has also supported experimentation. It has uh, also learned from, allows learn to learn from failures. An example comes from, uh, since you want to hear stories also, which comes to my mind from my very early days. And it was about setting up a knowledge management uh, framework and a system and digitize it too. And this I'm talking about almost, what, uh, 15, 16 years ago in an organization where digitization was not even, was even, was not a buzzword, right? The way it is now. And so, so and to get that opportunity to do that on your own is immense. Um, and I've carried that with me uh, throughout my, uh, my work life. And I keep telling my team also saying, this is what, growth should be all about. It, it, for me, it is uh, really about challenging the status quo and uh, striving for excellence. Perfect. Uh, and I think because because you mentioned several Tata companies within the larger Tata group, right? Do you also see uh, the blooming of certain microcultures within specific uh, uh, organizations with, within a larger group? Absolutely. You would find it, uh, there are pockets uh, across the organization which you may not be aware about. And suddenly there would be one idea, uh, which is really a breakthrough idea, which would come across because when you travel, you meet people and someone would say, you know, Ruchara, can we do this? And say, oh, wow, you know, why didn't we think about it? Vis-a-vis uh, -vis some other places where you would find that people would still want to do uh, the things the way it has been done traditionally and they're happy doing it and the success has been there, right? So, so they don't want to change whatever is not broken. They don't want to mend whatever is not broken and which I understand. So there are these uh, micro, as you said, uh, uh, niches which are there within the organization. And you would find, I'm sure in Nullscape also, you would find such things happening across the organization. Absolutely. Thanks, Ruchira, for those insights. Uh, Manu, uh, what does growth mean to you? And if you could also, uh, you know, take us through some journey of your of your professional growth where the organizations across where wherever you work have helped you in this transformation to, to what you are today. Yeah, most of the points that I think Ruchida has shared, uh, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, resonate with similar experiences, I would say. Uh, for me, I think growth is all about uh, thriving in the most challenging situations. That is one where somewhere, you know, uh, when you talk about growth or maybe leading towards the topic that we are going to discuss, a growth mindset is where, you know, ability to learn from your failures. And over a period of time, I think either in your personal life or in your professional side, you do go through those phases where, you know, you stare at failure uh, and 
idea is whether you stick there and say that hey this is my failure and you measure failure or do you decide to move on and say hey i need to do better or what is it that i've learned so that is the second part a uh, third would be more of uh, somewhere having the ability to come out of your comfort zone so that is the only way where you can move forward because if you are stuck in a certain uh, cocoon or uh, it's very difficult to thrive and move on so three points that i would say uh, i'm on now in terms of what i've learned from the organizations that i've worked for then uh, starting from my early part of the career uh, i would say the mid 90s where the way of working is very different obviously from what is happening now where uh, you know it was more of a hierarchical approach more of a top down saying that hey it's decided you need to do it where employees did not have those opportunities to uh, you know communicate freely or have the opportunity to take risks on their own or have the opportunity to actually get into a zone where they could uh, you know be more creative unless you had a super boss or a god a good mentor early part of a career where you know he would guide you and coach you so i would say the first 6 years of my career was where it was just following you know there was no opportunity but the transition which has happened i would say uh, in the last 10 years uh, again uh, something that you mentioned rujira where the uh, you know the uh, coming of these all big technology companies like uh, say an apple coming or a google coming or uh, you know the big names that are there i think somewhere the realization of organizations wanting to be more employee friendly uh, and that is what helped me i would say uh, you know and i can take the name of an organization i was working with this large oil and gas company called exxon mobil and there was a worldwide merger between exxon which was and you know big i think at that point of time it was the number 2 fortune 500 company and a mobile which was a number 4 fortune 500 company uh, two uh, you know oil companies coming together at and that was the biggest industrial merger in the world at that time and again i'm talking about somewhere around 2005 2006 uh, that gave me a phase of actually understanding uh, you know what innovation is all about uh, what uh, you know the integration of two different cultures coming together two different organizations so that phase of change management i think was a learning phase for me to move on and uh, learn from failures uh, come out of the comfort zone and then think of growth in a big way if i may put it across emmer thanks manu very very interesting points there uh, specifically pertaining to the kind of freedom that employees have today across organizations today and with that i'll come to you with the next question as well right while while things have moved and progressed a lot in the last two or three decades as you mentioned we still see a lot of potential biases and barriers in organizations uh, that can probably hinder the growth mindset or the development of such mindset in organizations so how can actually organizations work on that yeah i think that narrative is changing to a large extent now and uh, you know somewhere the realization of creating a culture of growth mindset within an organization and rochera i think uh, you know when we talk to senior light leaders like you like chros and uh, hr heads i think it is coming out very prominently where you know culture needs to be set in where it's more about growth mindset culture of innovation uh maybe culture of uh, you know uh, say creating a customer centric approach uh you know very strong uh but the barriers what i still see uh, again based on you know the opportunity that we get to interact with different organizations and different uh, sectors across is that there is still a sense of feeling that uh, you know there is a measurement of success uh there is still a sense of feeling that uh, you know if you perform better than someone else is where you are regarded as better so these are the biases or these are the barriers where uh, you know that growth uh, opportunity for the employee for the team or for the organization is taking a big hit i think the entire thing can change where you know and it all depends on the leaders how you drive that change within an organization uh by creating a sense of security by creating a sense of 
a fail fast culture where opportunities are given to employees that hey uh, you take a risk and if you fail we have your back you know so we will give you an opportunity to thrive we will give you an opportunity to move again ahead as long as it is not a habit so failure then should not become a habit also so two ways to address it one is creating that narrative within the organization in terms of giving that sense of security uh, to the employees to the teams and their ability to you know communicate with you to discuss with you and uh, be absolutely open in terms of understanding that failure does not define you thanks manu uh, ruchira your thoughts on maybe combating potential biases or unconscious biases as we call it so uh, see overcome bias overcoming biases and barriers uh, to a I, I, to a growth mindset begins with awareness uh, one if i'm not aware that this is to be classified as a bias i would continue to say things act in a way particular way which would not be inclusive so uh, i i i would say and manu has beautifully covered uh, one of my favorite saying that if you allow people to compete with each other in a saying 1 2 3 rank they will continue to have those uh, growth barrier uh, barriers to the growth in their in their mindsets so i'll talk about what we are doing in kotak life and we have led programs for doing this and it started almost a couple of years ago and we started with leaders uh with a discovery discussion with the the executive council to discuss the kind of biases that might exist in the organization and just accepting saying that yes it might be there in the pockets and then prioritizing that which are the areas that the leadership team would like to work and to so as to reduce them and we have continued that premise with our next level of leaders where in we have used coaching as one of the key elements to say that please understand that there are barriers in your mindset and we can look for alternate solutions for anything and everything uh and so we have been working towards really breaking those barriers more uh than what we have been doing earlier we also have an exclusive program for women across the length and the breadth of the company which focuses on addressing these kind of mindsets these kind of self limiting beliefs that mostly women might carry and we are also working with their managers saying that please allow the women to explore those because th- it has to go hand in hand you yes. cannot just focus on one part of the organization and not prepare the other part of the organization to accept those changes that the person might be going through so it's more about recrafting those processes nudging people to ask why not you know as simple as that people who are becoming first time managers uh, expanding their mindset to say that uh, this may not be the only way of working and you can really expand your horizon to think saying why not recently uh, i must also share with you and i'm extremely proud of that work that the team is doing we uh, we are working with the young leaders the future leaders for the organization something such as a 40 under 40 which uh, many uh, you would see a plethora of those and one of the first programs that we started rather the launch that we did uh, once we had identified those uh, young leaders is a human intervention lab for them to understand that the mindset barriers are the biggest barriers that they might have and how can they think bigger different larger faster uh, whatever you know uh, uh, and and, and uh, or limited in in the scope of things that could be of course we actively promote diversity and inclusion as it is a given right different different perspectives really spark a different kind of a journey for everyone uh, so for us it is extremely critical that we have a diverse mindset of people and uh, those people also do not have any uh, as i say uh, 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 thinking of self limiting beliefs are really out of the window 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Ruchira, for sharing some very, very interesting uh, examples and anecdotes. Uh, I will come to the next question, but before that, I will want to share a stat that we have uh, with us. So it says that the startup genome project revealed that startups that pivot once or twice in their early stages are 2.5 times more likely to succeed. Now, pivoting, as, as we know, is, is a form of controlled experimentation. So, Ruchira, although, although uh, your organization is, is not really a startup per se, right? But organizations today, they say, are required to think like startups because these are very uh, dynamic times, right? So, how do you really handle and encourage risk taking or pivoting or experimentation within the context of uh, uh, fostering this growth mindset? Beautiful question, Mr. As I mentioned earlier, Cortex uh, started with a very entrepreneurial uh, mindset. And I, when anybody asks me, and I say we are an organization in the BFSI sector, in the financial services uh, industry, which has a lot of heart, but we are always wanting to do uh, something more or something different. Uh, instead of giving you the entire plethora of the risk taking or entrepreneurial mindset or experimentation mindset that you spoke about. Let me give you a, a flavor of the kind of experimentation that happens at the, the HR team in Kodak Life. And that would give you a flavor of the work that uh, the entire ecosystem at uh, Kodak fosters. So at any given point of time, MR, at least 10 to 15 members of my team would be exploring newer ways of doing things. So it could be either implementing AI for hiring or AI ML for employee engagement or identifying and identifying uh, early warning signals or developing coaches from within the organization or making mental health cafe, which is our brand that we have branded it, talk of the town. You know, many organizations would uh, just leave it by doing a lip service. But for each of these things, there's a very detailed and experimental work that is happening. Uh, and, and we really work with the ecosystem around us and, and really making a difference. So what we really do is create an environment for people to take up areas that excite them, uh, gives them opportunity to learn. Um, we also allocate time and resources because otherwise it will be meaningless. So it has to be, there has to be resources allocation for the experimentation that an individual wants to do within the realm of our uh, people agenda. And uh, so, for example, I'll tell you another uh, piece. We said that Kotak life or, or life insurance per se is not one of the favorites of, for youngsters to join. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, oh, I want to join a life insurance company. So we want to create mind space uh, in the minds of youngsters and people saying it is very exciting industry and they can really make an amazing career uh, in this organization. So a couple of my team members took up that uh, challenge and they said, OK, I'm going to go to the colleges. I'm going to go to even the, the hinterlands of India and do roadshows with people to talk about and not about Kotak uh, uh, life but exactly what life insurance is all about and how can they build careers um, in, in, in the industry, which I don't think an organization, a corporate, so for that matter, would have taken up in a structured way. So there are clear objectives. There are success matrices that are set for any experimentation because we want it to be also successful. We also reward uh, innovative thinking. We celebrate small wins uh, along the way and so that it continues to happen. The, the continuous improvement continues to happen as well as the experimentation uh, that people want to do. They can raise their hand and they can do so. Those are really very, very useful insights, Ruchira, that you've shared in so much detail and I'm sure the audience will find it very useful uh, when applying in their organizations as well. So I hope so too. You. Thank you so much. Uh, Manu, uh, your take on the entire experiment, experimentation and pivoting a bit. How, how can organizations 
encourage that within the uh, entire setup yeah Amar, i think uh, you're talking about risk taking uh, i think the first step towards that is uh, giving the right environment to the employees and helping them come out of their comfort zone that is one so giving them that narrative that even if you fail you know it's not going to be the end of the world for you and how do you do that so it could not be measuring people on the success rate but it could be setting the narrative again and i'm going to use this word again and again by simply even praising their worth eth- ethics in terms of what is it that they're bringing uh, you know the values that they bring on the table it could be as basic as that uh, and i can share a example and this is somewhere i read that uh, you know uh, there is some high school in chicago i don't recall the name where once they give the uh, report card to the students and if you've not done well or you've not touched a certain point they don't call it a failure they simply write two words which is not yet saying that hey not yet but this actually conveys a message saying that you still have an opportunity to come so that enables the individual uh, and in this case could be the student where you you know have that kind of a uh, uh, feeling that hey i can try again it's not the end of the road for me and i can go back and if i take that example to our corporate world you know it's it's again doing as basic as that where you encourage people to come out you encourage people to take those risks and that as something that ruchira you know great examples that you know in terms of what are what whatever is happening in kotak life uh would set the narrative for the employees to improvise and have that risk taking uh, capability as well that's a beautiful example you shared manu the not yet example in the university uh very inspirational and because because you touched upon uh this phrase uh, called comfort zone uh several times in, in our conversation i would i would bring the next question to you and it it relates to how can organizations or leaders actually overcome the potential resistance of a fixed mindsets within individuals right especially when you are uh in your comfort zone this can come in very easy to to resist change or to resist any kind of experimentation so how can organizations take on that challenge when fostering a, a growth mindset uh, now the term growth mindset and again based on uh, you know certain insights that i gathered again the coinage of this word actually comes uh, from an author called uh, carol dwight you know so there uh, you know there is a book called uh, mindset uh, the new psychology of success and she calls it very uh, clearly in the book that you know the entire part of setting a growth mindset within the organization uh, for the leaders or for anyone is what are the kind of words you use as part of your narrative uh, what is the kind of communication you have whether it's a team meeting or whether it's a one on one happening uh you know again going back to something that i spoke of uh, where it's about praising the ethics it could be as basic as uh, raising the effort that the individual is getting on the table it could be as basic as uh, uh you know praising the beliefs that the individual brings on the table it could be as basic as uh, uh, you know the improvement in the process that they would have done say if you're at a point a and you move to a point b uh even if it's not the end of the story what is the improvement that has happened so if that narrative is said within the organization and it is built around as a culture uh you know the entire tone of moving towards a growth mindset uh sets in beautifully and you could be on that journey of transformation happening perfect ruchira your your thoughts on that this is a tough one you know so everything uh, will have some section of people Uh, who would resist uh, such things so so there's this strong element of with me you know what is in it for me um and if that core purpose is well defined and well understood by all truly understood by all i think that really serves the purpose a first part of it but you know what according to me works the best good old peer pressure so the moment someone witnesses good work from another colleague getting recognized and rewarded 
it really inspires them to also extend their boundaries and that's a beautiful thing you know because that spurs people to do better things more things uh deeper things so the depth and the breadth both gets impacted uh and, and you just have to have the right pressure points for people to understand those those levers uh the second is of course recognizing and rewarding the people who embrace change who take on new challenges that is i think very crucial otherwise uh, and 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 manu has been talking about it uh if you do not recognize those narratives by for by the people who are take, going that extra mile and taking those risks uh and if you are not also rewarding the failures or the learning coming out of it uh it will not spur others to do good work and the third thing amar you know i believe uh, leaders themselves need to model the behavior uh the behavior they want to see in others they have to showcase their willingness to learn to adapt and if a new data point comes to them how are they really receiving that data point to chart their decision making or to take another direction which uh, uh, which is staring at them uh, i think those are the uh, ways one can really and kind of motivate others to also or the people who are resisting to see that okay uh, there is light after the end of the tunnel and uh, they can also take that path so it is a nudging nurturing caring piece also which is required for this yeah and if i may just jump in uh, emer i think great point on the leader leadership part ruchira and uh, somewhere you know people who drive that change uh, towards growth mindset i think a very basic questions that comes very often are the leaders themselves ready to change you know do the leaders have that growth mindset and are they able to create that learning culture within the organization that they showcase and walk the talk in terms of they changing embracing change and then leading their teams versus something being just put on the table and they struggle to do it where that entire transformation which needs to happen uh maybe you know moves towards a disaster zone definitely i think there is a definite light at the end of the tunnel and rochira you don't have to bother about the dimming of the light because we can see you very clearly i think it's the light of your brilliance coming out reflecting on the screen the light so, is on amar now so that those actions are required in between but uh we'll we'll move to the next question very very interesting insights again richard and thank you for that but uh, specifically because you've mentioned about uh, coaching culture a couple of times as well right so i will target this question at you and it it pertains to what is the role that coaching actually plays in building this continuous learning and this mindset around growth uh, 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 a uh, growth and uh, you know performing better which you mentioned if 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 your colleague is doing better than you you are automatically bound to get out of your comfort zone so what kind of a role does mentorship and coaching play in that i firmly believe that finding a good coach or a mentor or a sponsor is the best gift one can give to self insights that a good coach can provide one and help one navigate to internal mindset barriers breaking the shackles of the past come to terms with the immense potential one has within is priceless and and i have i have experienced it myself and i have been propagating it i have been talking about it to my team members finding coaches for people saying it's important that you do that but as many things that i believe in i also believe in structure structuring this so that it is not it does not remain just in my uh, khayala you know my my intentions it has to get uh, get translated uh, if i may say into something very concrete I, and i'll give you examples from kotak life um a couple of examples so we are we run something called transcendence it is a women mentoring program which is women mentoring women program and it is now in the third year is the simplest of promises that works so we we said we all need someone who inspires us to do better 
then we know how. So be that someone, be that mentor. And I'm really proud to say that today we have almost 100 plus women being mentored by women leaders at Kodak Life. In fact, some of the women who were getting mentored have now become mentors for the young uh, women who are there, young ladies who are there in the organization. We have also another example, which is a very interesting case, uh, which I think is an interesting case, is we have uh, successful leaders who have been trained by, I think, one of the best uh, uh, in the world of coaching. And in turn, they have adapted coaches who truly need their guidance. And these coaches may not be performing well at their um, at, at their level or might be struggling with certain issues. So these, these coaches who have been trained, as I said, by the best in the world have now adopted those kind of people. Usually what we do is we give coaches to people who are anyway successful or doing well in the organization. But we also wanted to turn this upside down and um, utilize that expertise which is there in the organization. So I, I believe that it's essential that uh, that we provide tools, that we provide training uh, to both mentors as well as mentees. It's, it's a two-way process and we do through workshops. Uh, for all our frontline sales leaders for the past many years now, they, are, they always get trained. Uh, and, and we encourage them to have a coach in themselves, you know, that, that kind of a skill that we are uh, continuously want to develop for our leaders and managers at all levels. So, uh, so yes, I gave you a couple of examples because you said, how can we, uh, how can we plug it in within the organizational structure? And those are the two examples that we, or three rather, that we drive in Kotak Life. I think it's it's really beautiful to say the least how you are, uh, you know, taking us through all all the programs and your methods within the organization. And I must thank Manu for recommending your name for this show. It's it's uh, very very insightful. Thank you so much, Richard. Thanks, Manu. Uh, I follow you. Thanks, follow you on, I follow you on LinkedIn, so I'm absolutely aware of the great stuff that you're doing, Richard. And of course, it's we keep on hearing those examples, uh, you know, when we are talking to uh, people around. I'll pass on the compliments to the team. They sure. are the ones who are driving it, really. Sure. Sure. Amazing. So, Manu, similar question. And also from the perspective that coaching and mentoring is not whole, uh, not just helping individuals and teams, but it's also helping the organizations in terms of uh, having a higher uh, talent retention rate within their organizations if they have a, a coaching culture and I have stats for that, right? So your your perspective on that? Yeah, absolutely, Amar. I think uh, if you need to maximize your potential, you need a coach. Something that Ruchira spoke of, whether it's a coach mm -hmm. or a mentor coming. Because that is one way you're going to get constant feedback uh, and without any biases. Because there's someone looking at you, observing you and giving you constant feedback. And that is one step forward on a growth mindset part, what we are, you know, been discussing. So again, growth mindset is moving from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset and moving into a zone of, you know, being more creative, learning from your failures, innovating more and having a longer term view rather than uh, a short term view. So coaching and mentoring, I think, needs to be an integral part of uh, a process, uh, which, uh, you know, based on uh, some of the great examples that Ruchira has already shared. And that is, again, uh, you know, uh, as we call the future of learning now, based on the changing workplace ethics and hybrid work and so many changes happening outside, uh, even at a mid-level, uh, uh, you know, development, uh, the good news is that uh, organizations are actually involving coaches, which was once upon a time a perk of only, say, senior leaders or CXOs that you need to develop so you would get an executive coach who would work on a one-to-one -one basis. That shift is tremendous. And that is a great way forward for that growth mindset transformation to happen across, I would say. Right. Uh, Manu, my next question is directed at you. And uh, I know you both have shared multiple, multiple uh, examples. But in your experience, do you have any success story where probably uh, a growth mindset led to certain innovations uh, within the company or within the team itself, Manu? 
yeah i would not look around i will look the organization perhaps where i work you know with knowledgecape where uh, thinking growth is actually a value for us uh, amor you would know that Absolutely. and when you are talking about thinking growth it is actually saying that hey you need to move towards a growth mindset uh and that is where i think uh, starting from uh, 2020 onwards uh, where you were hit by the biggest health challenge across globally i think somewhere uh, you know the internal senior teams actually took a call that hey help people goes without saying whether it's uh, on their uh, mental health or on their physical health or with all the challenges that everyone uh, uh, was going through how can you be more innovative and how can you involve people in the growth story of the organization uh, so ruchira just to give you background uh, like any other consulting organization nolscape is say about 150 to 160 employees so it's everyone knows everyone goes without saying but how do you bring everyone together on a common platform that is where we uh, you know set the narrative of being innovative and when talk about innovation it is you know it could be innovation on the products that you take to your clients again somewhere having that ability to uh, forecast and see okay what's the need going to be in the next 2 years what's the need going to be in the next 6 months uh what is the buzz within the hr or the lnd industry uh so these are examples amar where we've been able to bring in technology to our solutions or where we have been able to inculcate to a large extent now elements of artificial intelligence uh, coming in uh, where we have been able to actually create a pipeline of products uh, which absolutely resonates uh, you know when we approach uh, you know the senior hr or the lnd folks in saying that hey what's the need in your organization or what are the talent transformation initiatives that you are planning to take and how do you see your organization in the next 6 months or in the next one year or in the next two years whatever the vision of that organization is uh, so i would say these are examples of uh, innovation these are examples of a growth mindset uh, amr where we've been able to include all that as part of the uh, you know the vision that i would say that non nonscape has thank you so much manu for sharing that nonscape story with, with the audience and with ruchira as well bhai right? ruchira you have shared some great examples uh, maybe one on how how uh, you know a growth mindset led to an inno- innovation in your experience so since uh, manu spoke about started the his <coughs> response with health uh, let me take the example of uh, something that we recently launched called <coughs> happy you it's a whole new world for well being and uh, i also request both of you to also explore it's an app it's available on android as well as ios it's a, it's a very unique offering and which is designed to engage with our extended kotak life uh, family uh, customers their loved ones everyone right all of us um, it's it's there uh, and the the beautiful part it, it is developed in house by a very small team it must be about a 3 4 member team which was newly constituted so it's a new team which got constituted and they got it it got launched uh, recently and it covers 360 degree aspects of well being personalized fitness plans traction against the plan so so that you know whether you are really living up to the agenda that you had set up at the beginning uh, you can take well being assessments one can uh, do actually it has all the mental health resources or other health resources you ask it and it's there uh, and so so it was done with a very collaborative and a problem solving mindset uh, we developed an innovative solution which i think exceeded all our expectations i, I think it's a beautiful example of uh, if you want to do something and this is n- it's just an offering it is not we are not getting anything out of it right so there's it's not being sold to people uh but it is about taking care of the well-being of the the society at large and uh, i think it's a beautiful example that proves the power of uh, growth mindset in um, achieving remarkable results do explore it i i i am very i'm very proud of the way it looks and the way it, it's a very nice cozy uh, we call it's it's a 
the the mascot is called kobe so yeah absolutely we'll do that sure thanks for chira for for those recommendations and and lovely insights uh with that we move to our penultimate question for this session and ruchira i'll come to you for that right because we we spoke about microcultures within organizations as well as larger conglomerates having different different companies different probably cultures also right so how do you really align that with larger organization goals and when you look at specific uh, individual growth goals vis-a-vis overall company goals right how do you align that and how do you create a balance between that so uh, we strike a balance by aligning individual goals with team goals and the organization objective it's as simple as that so individual growth is going to contribute to the team success which is really going to drive the company growth so we follow a very uh, a top down approach and a bottoms up approach because that's where the entire uh, the agenda setting the strategy and how strategy gets translated into my uh, monthly uh, the achievables that i'm supposed to do my my uh, my so called targets and such things so that's one part of it the second part of course is uh, we have a regular feedback system we have a regular performance evaluation process which really ensures the alignment is there it is not broken and we do it every quarter and, and of course it's an ongoing process uh, we also encourage a lot of knowledge sharing we have a lot of cross functional collaboration and cross functional projects uh, any product that gets launched uh in terms of its pricing designing getting it to the uh, the end consumer uh aligning with the business teams uh it's something that people come together and they do so and lastly as i have been talking about uh, rewards and recognition platforms are a plenty at kodak life both for individual excellence as well as for uh, team successes and and i think this is enough for to pursue not just individual growth uh, which everybody aspires to but also see that those individual growths are aligned to what the organization as such is wanting to achieve and within that these projects actually give a lot of leeway to the people to explore the experimental part of that growth mindset that we have been discussing thanks so chira uh, manu your thoughts on that uh so great points again by ruchi i you know in terms of the quote of context uh, so i will not go specifically into uh, you know any particular organization i'm just taking that liberty you know getting the opportunity to it, interact with a lot of organizations and a lot of senior leaders across sectors industries whether it's the banking or fncg or telecom i think uh, the one narrative which comes out very strongly that you know growth is the oxygen for any organization and if you talk about growth it could be the individual who wants to grow the team that is part of also wants to grow and the team which is part of the organization also wants to grow so there is no organization which is say that hey this year we did x revenue in terms of our total t- turnover next year let's decide to cut cut that by 25% it's not heard of and it will never happen so growth stems from the fact in terms of what is the overall narrative that is getting created and each is linked to the other so uh, you know it is all about creating that framework again in terms of whether uh, growth or creating that uh, growth mindset within the organization is actually part of uh, if not the main strategy but a subset of any strategy within the organization while well, you would have you know strategies in terms of your vision what is the revenue you want to achieve where do you want to go you have a three year vision or a two year vision but to reach there are the people ready to embark on that journey so do you have uh, you know some of the things that ruchira has already mentioned in place to ensure that people get those opportunities uh, people get that uh, sense of uh, again something that we've been talking about of uh, that risk taking appetite uh, to embark on that journey and that is where i would say that everything towards the end needs to be perfectly tuned for that engine to move and uh, be in sync in terms of the innovation or uh, the creativity that the organization needs to bring and more so now because of the changing external world 
uh, you know, in terms of what's happening outside, uh, you know, there are absolutely, uh, uh, you know, a lot of signals coming in terms of the uncertainty. Uh, leaders are under a lot of pressure uh, overall in terms of uh, staying awake at night and taking certain decisions and the pressure from the board or the pressure from the external environment in terms of being more competitive. Competition is in any sector that you speak of. Uh, so how do you manage that change? That entire journey of change management also comes into play. I think, uh, Emma, it's it's pretty complex, but yes, these should be fine-tuned to a way that each complements the other. Wonderful uh, analogies there, uh, Manu. And uh, for, for my last question, to also sort of sum up the entire session. And because you spoke about leaders being in a lot of... Uh, anxiety as well at times because of the growing competition, changing dynamics, new technologies and all of that, right? Do you have any recommendations in, in terms of the kind of programs that talent leaders can use to probably cultivate a culture of growth or growth mindset in this rapidly evolving ecosystem? Sure. I'll, I'll take the example, uh, you know, again, I'm falling back on the framework that we spoke to speak about the uh, uh, the digital blur framework, uh, which you know is talks about the leaders in terms of being future ready. Uh, organizations uh, need to be future ready. Uh, so we all are familiar with the traditional leadership capabilities and competencies, where you talk of leadership styles or critical thinking or ability to manage your teams or. But what are the competencies or capabilities that leaders need for the future? Uh, and I'm going to link it to, uh, you know, the topic that we are discussing in terms of uh, growth mindset. Uh, so what's coming out emerging very strongly is that our leaders, uh, you know, uh, our leaders, networking leaders, our leaders, design thinking leaders, our leaders, agile leaders, our leaders, uh, sense making leaders. So when I say sense making, it is using data to a large extent to take decisions. And I'll pick up one, you know, which is again comes closest to uh, the growth mindset uh, story is that if you look at the agile methodology, uh, there is something that leaders need to have, which is a fail fast culture. That means you fail, you immediately need to understand why you failed. You need to regroup, reconvene and, you know, move on without actually saying that, you know. So in terms of specific changes that we see, so a lot of focus on design thinking to a large extent, a lot of focus on uh, agile ways of working, a lot of focus on, uh, uh, you know, having a digital mindset for you as well and to drive that down within your team. Uh, so three critical things which come out very strongly, I would say. Great recommendations there, uh, Manu. And coming to you, Ruchira, you've already shared a plethora of, of examples and case studies with us. But if you could uh, sum up this topical discussion with some recommendations from you for the leaders who are looking at building a growth-oriented uh, culture within their organizations. So, Amar, I'm going to take a detour. Uh, not really recommend, which I, I actually completely agree with what Manu, all the recommendations that Manu has given and uh, we are focusing on all of those. So I'm going to recommend something uh, different. I'm going to recommend, uh, first of all, that there has to be a comprehensive blueprint for people uh, and talent readers to rethink their approach to development. Uh, that entire nine box piece and only taking certain people to a certain journey is, uh, is good. But I think it's now also time to learn. And that's where uh, that's one of the recommendations that I have is learn how to unearth ideas and talent which reside within the organization. So learn, have a knack to unearth those talents and ideas. So that's one. The second is I would say uh, have an exposure to world-class thinking have an outside in view all the time organizations can invite leaders and industry thought leaders the best in the industry uh, to address the talent within uh, so another exposure could be 
uh, that the talent which is there or the people who are there within the organization can they be exposed to the think thought leaders within the organization we have something for example uh, called meet five greet five where the the top leadership has to meet two people two or two of our people uh, really in a month and have a long one one and a half hour discussion which is could be outside of the office so that that's something which is i think is extremely critical and since we're talking about growth mindset um, and i've been thinking about it while we have been discussing so taking that uh, that that thread forward it's very critical that we are able to the leaders are able to differentiate between a learning mindset versus a performance mindset see it's mm -hmm. critical to mentally prime them to increase their own competency engage in deep level learning strategizing uh, seeking out feedback performance mindset is i i i have to do this and i have been given a goal or a target and i go ahead and do it but learning mindset is that i am wanting to increase my competency and my depth of my knowledge so that i am able to contribute much more deeply another uh, idea that i have another thought that i have and i would recommend that is nudge people to move from entitled mindset to an earning mindset uh, we have been talking about in multiple forums you will hear and you enough has been written that uh, the young leaders are entitled leaders young people are entitled people i think they have to also start thinking saying entitlement is fine but they have to earn the right to be recognized for the depth and the breadth of good work that they do and not because another friend or a peer is being paid more so i i would say that you know learn to have an earning mindset than just an entitled mindset and of course a learning to have curiosity uh, so that you can continuously improve you can innovate uh, because in this rapidly changing environment as manu said it's very critical that i have that kind of bend of a mind and lastly people and organizations have to cultivate um and and realize that how data how algorithms how ai is really opening up newer possibilities all the time and and it's it's the right time to chart a path of for success in this ever changing business uh, landscape so I, I, another thing is uh, i think in this environment of rapidly evolving work environment as manu rightly mentioned uh, having a, a culture of curiosity and so that there is continuous improvement people are able to contribute more and more meaningfully me, more meaningfully that that is uh, that is going to be important and i think lastly people and organizations have to cultivate the realization that how data how algorithms how ai is opening up newer possibilities and newer ways of doing things and that is really what is charting the the success in this entirely a different and disruptive business landscape that we see currently and it is going to be really dominated by data intensive and intelligent technologies so that understanding of that having a digitalness is extremely critical thank you so much ruchira for those insights i think those were really very useful very practical uh, very, very very important insights for all our viewers and i'm sure when this episode actually comes out uh, on our website and social media all the viewers will find it extremely practical and uh, a great road map you've set set for people who are looking at implementing such programs right uh, with that with that we come to the end of our topical discussion but before we end the episode uh, there's another quick game now at the start of <laughs> the session we did like an ice breaker to to create that first impression of each other and through the course of this discussion i'm sure there would be some impression you both have made about each other so based on that impression uh, we'll close this episode with a quick association game and 
I will come to you, Manu, first. Uh, so, Manu, if Ruchira was a travel destination, it could be a village, a city, or a town, or a country, which one would she be and why? That's a tough one, Amar. You always throw a googly. <laughs> so, uh, I think first impressions, I would say Ruchira would be India. Goes without saying because of uh, how I see her right now. Absolutely, uh, India goes without thing with all the traditions and the values and everything that comes into play. Wonderful. Thank good, you. Good observation, Manu. <laughs> uh, I will turn to you, Ruchira, next. Uh, if Manu was a book, what would be its title? Insanely Simple. And there is a book called Insanely Simple. Um, I highly propagate that book and talk about it. It is about uh, Steve Jobs, written by the creative director of Apple. Fly on the wall account of how Steve Jobs used to think, operate, and really manage the show. And the way Manu explained uh, stuff, uh, it made everything so sound so simple. So yes, insanely simple. And it's the most tough thing to do, right? It's the toughest Absolutely. thing to do. Yes, yes. You want to be simple, but um, to achieve simplicity is toughest, which he was able to do during this course of an hour. I Thank think there couldn't, there couldn't have been a more perfect uh, association uh, for Manu, right? In terms of a book title. So great job there, uh, Ruchira. I think if I were to give a hamper, I would give it to you. Uh, for those uh, lovely insights and also playing the game so well and being such a sport. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this show. Hope you had a great time as well. And Manu, uh, you too, for joining us once again and sharing uh, all your information and the knowledge and wisdom that you have with such simplicity, like Richard has said. I hope the audience enjoys it as much as I, I did hosting this show. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ruchira, for being part of this uh, episode for us. And it's a lot of learning for me at a personal level. Great insights and congratulations on the great stuff and the great initiatives that are that you are leading, I would say, at Kotak Life Insurance. Manu, thank you so much. Ahmad, thank you so much. This was very well-structured and very thoughtful questions, I must say. Uh, it really wants to dig deep and it gives me also the opportunity to also share what Kotak Life is doing in these areas. There's, of course, a lot that needs to be done more. And I look forward to keep listening to you guys, uh, listening to other episodes of uh, your uh, your channel, MR. I'm sure they are extremely insightful and I'm sure I would, I'm going to get a lot of insights to implement within Kotak Life from those. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Ruchira. Thank you, Manu.